No. <laughs> hello. Hello. This is all tonight's going to be. Right. <laughs> keep saying hello. I really love cinematography and um, kicked around a long time. You know, um, I was a PA. I worked on very low budget commercials and gradually kind of got some lucky breaks and made it into features. I think in the positive way, I think I can't help but to see the world visually. And so, you know, that's the greatest part of it, I think, in a way, is that you can sort of, um, you know, I would rather show something than tell it. Um, you know, and I think in general, that's a wonderful thing. I try to write as quickly as possible, okay? I drive around, I think about stuff, I take a long time until I'm ready to write, until I basically have the story locked in my head. And then I sit down and I write on a legal yellow pad and I try to write it as quickly as possible. I try not to censor myself at all. I want to write it as quickly as possible. And then I will rewrite it anywhere from 20, 30, 40, 50 times, okay? And it's never good enough. You're usually starting with, where am I in the season? What do I need to accomplish? How much do I want to give away? I mean, part of it's just a feeling, like I feel like we've been missing this character. But mostly, you, you, you really are just kind of feeling your way through it. And as an audience member, you, you kind of know where what you want to see. Uh, but as a TV writer, if you're going to be sustaining something, you know that you're going to have to tease that out for a while. It's helpful to know that this was almost made like a home movie. There were no grown-ups in the room. All the, money, all the money came from private individuals, from our friends and relatives that we hit up. Uh, and... I think that the major difference uh, between this and any conventional movie is that we had no one telling us um, what we could or couldn't do. We wrote the film and then we went out and tried to find funding for it. It was very difficult to make a movie unbelievably with these two mugs starring. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine that. Uh, and so we, we managed to get funding from this producer and we shot 20 days and the film shut down. We went down for two years and then came back and shot the last five, which is not an ideal way to shoot. <laughs> I won the Razzie for Worst Screenplay of the Year the day before I won the, the Oscar. So I wasn't going to was bring <laughs> that up. I thought I'd let you. Oh, no, I'm, prou I'm proud of it. So um, they, they, they announced that I had gotten the Razzie, and so I called after about a week, and I said, where's my Razzie? <laughs> and they said, well, we don't actually, there isn't actually a Razzie. We just have the one that we take out for the photo, photo thing at the, at the awards. And I said, well, I, you know, I, you humiliated me and gave me a Razzie, and now you're saying I can't have my Razzie. So I forced them to make a Razzie for me. <laughs> so what advice would you give to young filmmakers? I don't know, just, um, just live inside your head, you know? Um, it's not good for relationships or anything else in life, but, um, it is, it is good for, uh, for doing imaginative work. It takes a lot of thinking, a lot of planning. You know, I tell people, like, I'll be driving into work and I'm working out a fight sequence in my head. You know, uh, my wife will, will, will be out to dinner and I'll be staring off into the distance and she's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm working out a fight sequence, you know? Because <laughs> in my mind, I'm picturing the scene, I'm picturing out, like, how it's moving and uh, it's a very engrossing, uh, Thing and it just takes control of your life at the same time. That's the only way you're going to get good, is if you put the time and effort and want to be good.